Well, welcome uh, to Paget's Awareness Day 2022, uh, which coincides with the 208th anniversary of Sir James Paget's birth. Now, I am Professor Stuart Ralston. I'm chairman of the Paget's Association. And the theme of the Awareness Day uh, uh, this year is the global uh, perspective of Paget's. And in this regard, I'm, it's my pleasure to invite Mr. Ricardo Patrick, uh, who has kindly agreed to be interviewed today. Now, Ricardo, among many uh, things is a well-known singer and recording artist and also uh, we're very lucky to uh, to have him as a patron of the Paget Association so welcome Ricardo thank you for joining us today. My pleasure good afternoon professor. Okay now um, we've spoken before Ricardo and I know you were born and raised in Manchester but perhaps you could say a few words about your heritage your family where, where you come from so to speak. Thank okay. You. Well, I was born in, in Manchester and my uh, parents, my father was from Barbados and my mother was, so, was from St. Kitts in the US Virgin Islands. Uh, and they both came to the UK, uh, obviously before I was born and uh, <laughs> hence what I'm here. <laughs> um, sorry, so I've been living around Manchester for most of my life. I actually live between the UK, uh, the Austrian Alps and Ibiza, which I have done for the last uh, 30 years or so. So I uh, flip between, I actually come back here for the cold because I like it, uh, which is a bit strange. I know at uh, the weekend I was hiking up in the lakes in uh, Lockrig Fell, which is about an eight, and, uh, it's a 14 mile walk hike. Uh, Cause I like that kind of thing. I just uh, love this, the, the winter here. It's just a bit strange. <laughs> Amazing. Most people go south for the winter, but you're opposite. But anyway, uh, very good to hear that. Mm -hmm. Now, um, we know actually in the UK, the Manchester area where you were born and brought up is a hotspot for Padgett's. And um, you were diagnosed with Padgett's, but maybe you could recount about, you know, how, how, what your symptoms were at the very start and, you know, what happened, how you were diagnosed. Okay. Um, it started actually when I... Um, drove, it sounds very strange, from Ingolstadt in Germany, uh, across Germany, because I'd picked up a new car from Audi, to uh, uh, Zeebrugge, whatever it's called, in Holland. And I got in the car and I was driving for probably about two or three hours and I had to keep stopping because I had a, a twitch in my right um, thigh. And I thought, that's really strange. And when I stood up, the twitch went. When I got back into the car, it got more severe. It was like a an electric shock. It was really extremely painful. So I took some painkillers, continued driving, and the painkillers seemed to have numbed the pain for, uh, which is incredible, for another nine hours until I got back to the UK. I didn't think anything else of it. I just thought I had um, sciatica or something. So I went to see a chiropractor uh, who and had all the heat treatment, the massages and whatever. And that seems to have settled the, the nerve thing down, which I thought it was at the time. Anyway, the pain kept reoccurring and getting worse, but sporadic, like as I, I only could describe it as a, a very sharp electric shock type pain. And I thought, this is not, this is this is something strange going on here. So I went to my doctor um, um, and uh, at um, Ultragen Medical Practice um, and, and she um, said a very strange thing to me. I said, well, I've got sciatic. And she says, well, that doesn't sound like sciatica to me. Um, and her name is Mary, um, she's a very, very lovely woman. And she uh, was involved years ago in the sickle cell research for Caribbean people in Manchester. Uh, Mary Adams, her name is, she was quite famous in her field. And she said, um, I would like to send you for a, a blood test. So I said, well, what's a blood test got to do with my, uh, the pain in my leg? She said, uh, I'll tell you once I've got the um, conclusion back. So I did the blood test. And I went to see her. She called me and said, said, I needed to go and do a scan, which got me worried, a CT scan and an MRI. And after doing both of those, um, she told me that I had Paget's disease. I was always shocked because I said to her, why were you even looking for something even called that? Because I've never even heard of it myself. And she said, because she'd been reading quite a lot about it in the last few years. And it sounded very similar. And she'd never diagnosed anybody, uh, obviously, with Paget's disease before. So I was shocked. And I was, you know, I was obviously quite upset. OK, thank you. Well, it's great to hear your GP was totally on it. And um, OK, <laughs> amazing. So which is which is great to hear. So um, obviously, those 
the scans happened. And then what next? Were you referred to a specialist or, or what happened next? Well, well then I, I, I went into uh, the sadness mode of tears and shock, horror, I'm going to die and all the rest of it. And, uh, um, and then I got a referral letter through from uh, Professor Selby, who's at the um, MRI in Manchester in that department. And I went to see him and he um, told me not to worry. They got it at a very early stage, uh, judging from what they'd seen. And I was then recommended to take a course of zoldronic acid through infusion. Uh, I'd read, read up on the zoldronic acid. I was quite afraid because apparently your body reacts against it in the first 24 hours. You get horrific flu-like symptoms and then you're reborn. So I reluctantly went and saw, I was in, I think it's Caroline Clegg, or I can't remember the name. Uh, Caroline Yager, Caroline Yager, perhaps. Caroline Yager, yeah. And um, I rang her and I was ringing everybody that I knew under the sun about this soldronic acid and all the rest of it. And in the end, I went to do it, the MRI. And sure enough, I had a flu-like attack for like 18 hours. is the worst flu I've ever had. And literally, I felt reborn when it left. And... Um, I've never had a, a pain or a twitch or anything ever again since. Wow, that's amazing. And, and how long ago, Ricardo, was this treatment? Is that a number I, of years? I think it must have been about uh, nine or ten years or maybe a little wow. bit wow. Maybe, wow. around that era. Uh, the, the thing is, every year I've been doing a, a alkaline phosphate level blood check. Um, and uh, the, uh, the alkaline phosphate level is actually lower than normal, which is good. Uh, and I did an atomic bone scan last year and they said there was no sign of the Paget's disease anyway, it gone into complete regression. Wow, that's amazing. And as you said at the start of our interview, you, after you flew back from wherever it was, Ibiza, you were hill walking and like, you're obviously quite an active guy. And I'm, I'm, I'm extremely active. I, I'm an active, I'm a long distance walker, speed walker, long distance swimmer, a runner, cyclist, and uh, swimmer, and hiker, and snowboarding. I do all, you know, every, every week. I can't, obviously don't do snowboarding every week, <laughs> but uh, uh, the rest, yeah. And apparently that the, the impact makes the bones stronger. So um, I don't think I've got weaker bones. I think it's just the, the, the fact that the Paget's disease had, had appeared from, I don't know where it appeared from. Okay, well, it's very interesting to hear. And I, I was going to ask if you were getting checkups, but obviously you are, you get your blood tested so often, your latest bone scan was okay. Well, Ricardo, it, it's been fantastic to talk to you today and thank you for just sharing your story. And, and, and I think, yeah, it just illustrates that you were picked up early, you were treated and, and have remained well ever since. So I think it, uh, your story will give hope to people with Paget's disease to, you know, get it diagnosed and get it treated. Absolutely. I mean, one of the things that I've learned, um, after, obviously, for, uh, after being initially shocked by it, was uh, don't give up on your body, basically. To, um, I mean, I train hard. I have, have, I've not had any impingements whatsoever. But for me, the checkups are extremely important and, and, and not being afraid of the, uh, of the results. You know, you have to do that because, you know, we only have one body and we have to deal with things as they come along but um, it's not hindered my life uh for the moment in any way whatsoever and i'm really grateful to people like yourself who've uh, who are doing research and uh, and uh, diane and everybody who's helping people with this situation like this thanks yeah. ricardo well thanks for sharing your experience you're an inspiration thank you. and and uh, thank you once again thank you